We've got two vectors, V is two five and W is six three. <laughs> We're trying to find the projection vector of V on the line along W. In this picture where here's V and this is W, you draw a perpendicular down to the line along W, which I could draw as well if I wanted to. And we're trying to figure out what, the, what this vector is right here. It's like it's the shadow of V if I have light rays coming in perpendicular to the line along W. I said you could use trigonometry to figure this out from scratch. And that's fine. You also can use a formula that you should know. It's certainly quicker to use the formula. Well, let me derive the formula in general. I think I do this in the lectures too, but I think it, it's worth doing. To derive the general formula involving dot products, it turns out, it's first to do some good, first good to do something else. To find another vector, call it U, parallel to W and pointing in the same direction and having unit length, length of one. This can always be done as long as W is non-zero. What you do to find U is you take W itself and divide it by its length, its magnitude, which again, I like putting double bar bars around magnitudes of vectors, partially just to emphasize that they're vectors. This is fairly common practice. In science books, they'll typically either just put a single set of bar bars like an absolute value sign, or maybe they'll just unbold face the letter for its magnitude, for the magnitude of the vector. If I could figure out how long this red vector should be, this red vector is the projection vector of V along W or along the line through W. If I could figure out the length of this projection vector, I would be done by just multiplying u by that length. You can easily figure out the length of this with trigonometry. So Katoa, use the Ka version, that's simplest. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse has a length equal to the magnitude of V which you can figure out, yes, for this problem, but I'm not going to bother right at the moment. Cosine of this angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, the adjacent is the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. This side has a length of the magnitude of V times the cosine of that angle. Right? This is right triangle trigonometry problem solving. You've done this many times. So the projection vector, therefore, the projection vector could be thought of as the length of V times the cosine of the angle times the vector W over its magnitude. Through a little bit of trickery, we can relate this to dot products. What kind of trickery? multiply this expression by the length of W divided by the length of W. And write the final thing like this, oops, like this, the length of V times the length of W times the cosine of the angle times the vector W over its magnitude, its length, squared. Just a little algebra trick there. Going from here to here, I just multiplied by the fraction magnitude of W divided by the magnitude of W, which is one, so it doesn't change the value of this expression. But that's a worthwhile thing to do because we recognize this as the value of V dot W. And this thing can also be written in terms of dot products. This is less recognizable, but you should know for this class that that is the same as W dot itself. Whenever you 
square the magnitude of the vector is the same as dotting the vector with itself. And that's why this formula can ultimately be simplified as V dot W over W dot W, don't forget your dots, times the vector W. It's so important to keep track of what's a vector and what's a scalar. Of course, all the Vs and Wcs that you see are vectors, but when you take dot products, you get numbers, scalars. This is a number, a scalar. <laughs> This is a vector, a number, a scalar times a vector is another vector. The answer is a vector. The whole thing is a vector. What vector is it? Now we have to figure it out. V dot W is 25.63. W dot W is 6.3 dotted with itself. And the vector W itself is just a 6.3. We use the geometric meaning of dot product here, but down here it's used, easier to use the definition of dot product in terms of the arithmetic that you do. You do two times six, Let's just write that as 12. Plus five times three. On the bottom, you do six times six plus three times three. Don't forget to multiply by the vector six, three. Simplify 27 40 fifths times six, three. Both of those are divisible by nine. That's the same as three fifths times the vector six, three. That's the correct answer, but you also typically multiply the scalar back through the vector. Six times uh, three fifths is 18 fifths. Three times three fifths is nine fifths. If you wanna write that as a decimal, it's fine. This would be then 3.6, 1.8. Then you can see if it seems about right. Look at the picture, 3.61.8 to look about right. 3.6, yeah, with a little bit of fudging. 1.8, yeah, with a little bit of fudging. My drawing's not perfect. Seems somewhat reasonable. Okay. Projection vectors have importance in this course too, not just now, but later. 